Hi, this is David. So your car won't start. Battery checks out. Starter appears to be okay, although it's missing the start signal. In part three here of this video series, we're going to look at something else. Some of the other elements in the uh, start circuit that can cause it to fail to start. And for that, not a bad idea to have a, a schematic, electrical diagram of the circuit, because they do vary from car to car. But we'll touch on some of the more common other causes for starter failure in this uh, video segment. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we look over this schematic, and one of the first things I notice is, darn, this thing is hard to read. It's going to be hard for you to see this on video. I'm going to be focusing a fair amount on, uh, during this video on the starter relay. Um, what I've done then, just made a uh, more readable, but rather perhaps crude, <laughs> diagram here of a start circuit. So of course the standard things first that are easy to check. You want to check the fuses. There's, there's a couple of them um, in the particular car I'm looking at. I have a Dodge Caravan here. Um, there's a, a large 40 amp fuse that you can check that's uh, in the circuit uh, for the relay um, power contact on the relay. You want to make sure that fuse is good. Um, although I'm going to check it with power applied to it only. Um, and, and look for any other fuses that might be involved in this circuit. Um, what I'm going to start doing here, start looking at, is I'm going to find the relay, the starter relay. I'm going to start troubleshooting from there, uh, break into the circuit, and uh, have a look and see where we have our voltage, where we have our power, and where we don't, and then just work around from that. So our schematic tells us that the relay, starter relay, is in this power and distribution center. So we pop this off, and they have a guide in here where the various components are. And there's the starter relay right there. So it's the third slot over from this end. And right there. Now one thing that you can do um, to just quick let you can quickly do is unplug it and find an adjacent one. Double check to make sure the numbers are the same. Just swap them and see if your problem goes away when you swap in another one. Try that. Um, you can have a helper start the uh, try to start the car and then feel for the relay here. I'm going to hold this down now and feel for a um, a changing contacts in it. Yep. Can you hear it? So that's operating. So our problem is elsewhere. Another thing you can do is go into the schematic and check the relay socket, which one the um, power comes in on, which one is the power side. So you have two parts to a relay. You have a control circuit, you know, which is a coil, and you have a power circuit, which is a contact inside. On this one, I looked at the schematic, and I should have 12 volts coming in here, right on that socket, and um, coming from this fuse right here. So I want to make sure I have that. Okay, which the important thing is you have to find some place to break into the circuit and establish where you have power and where you don't. So I plugged in a uh, little test lead here. It's going to the positive on my meter. Now my negative on my meter um, is over here on the battery, the battery negative terminal. So now we'll find out. Let's turn the meter on. Let's find out we should have 12 volts here. And we do have a hardy 12.64 volts. It tells us that we're, it's, we have good power to the starter on the power contact on the relay. So when the, the starter, so when it's turned on, the ignition's turned on, that'll transfer over as the contact closes to the other side. Now if I wanted to test, for example, this section of wire between the relay terminal 87 and the starter motor, a solenoid in, I would simply have to touch touch that contact, these two right here, and jump across the relay, and the car should start. I'm not going to actually start this, but I'm just going to touch it just to show. You know, that would verify the wire. And uh, doing that reminds me of the very first car that I ever had. Couldn't afford much. It was back in the Army. Get a big old Chrysler about a block long, and you could not start that car from the ignition switch. I had to reach underneath, I'd open up the hood, I had to uh, put a screwdriver across relay terminals, which is similar to what I'm doing here, and then uh, to start it. That was fun. 
Okay, so the starter relay. One component you definitely uh, would be interested in checking out if you have an odd problem where you can't get it started. You know the starter's good, you know the battery's good. So what we have to do then is one by one eliminate components or find where we have power and where we don't and where it's lost. And there's a number of possibilities. A common one is a neutral safety switch on the transmission that won't allow the car to start except in new, uh, won't allow it to start in anything but neutral and park. Um, many cars have an alarm system or an anti-theft system. You know, that could be involved. It's going to depend on the individual car. But the troubleshooting methods are always going to be the same. You have to break into the circuit somewhere and find out uh, where you're losing your chain of command, you know, all the way from the ignition switch, you know, through the relay to the starter. Find out where you're losing it and repair that. And you can test it a number of different ways. You can throw jumpers across there once you find a couple of points. Um, point is you just have to keep at it. This kind of electrical circuit troubleshooting can be difficult, uh, but definitely doable. So good luck with it, you know, and thanks for watching.